Hello, everybody, and either welcome or welcome back to my podcast. As always, I'd like to remind everybody, if you do like this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. So today we're going to do something that I haven't done in a little while, and that's a read-along, because it's been a minute since I've seen a piece come down my timeline that deserves it as much as this one does, and that is this piece that was written for GQ, titled, How to Talk to the Women in Your Life Right Now. Yeah, you can probably already see where this is going. I tweeted it out if you follow me. You've probably already seen the tweet. But this piece really deserves just a line-by-line evisceration because this is just so... It's so indicative of this moment. And this is kind of... I am intending this as kind of like a complimentary piece to my normal weekly podcast because I do want to talk about some of the things that have been happening culturally ever since this Kavanaugh thing has popped off. But this piece deserves its very own episode to kind of discuss the things that are in this piece. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I said, title of the piece is How to Talk to the Women in Your Life Right Now by Marion Bull. And it starts out like this. For women, non-binary people, and survivors of sexual abuse, this week has been demeaning, exhausting, depressing, terrifying, and rage-inducing. Well, first off, thank you, Marion, for at least acknowledging that, yes, men can be the victims of sexual assault, too. Nobody ever really likes to talk about that. Watching a group of rich white men try to undermine the experiences of Dr. Blasley Ford National hero and accuser of Supreme Court hopeful Brent Kavanaugh has meant a consistent reminder that our trauma and our experiences are not important to those in power in this country. Okay, first of all, on on the, the national hero thing, am I the only person that remembers that Dr. Ford specifically asked to be anonymous and to remain so, and that Her choice to be outed in public was not really her own. It was basically made for her. So this idea of her being a national hero for coming out, yeah, you're kind of whitewashing how that all went down. And as far as your personal traumas and experiences not being important to the people in power in this country, well, hello, hi, welcome to the anarchist side of things. Like, yes... They, they don't really care about what happens to you personally. It's, it's not, that's not how this works. But moving on. This feeling, of course, is not new. It's something we've known for a long time, maybe forever. That American power structures don't really give a shit about the guy who raped you in high school, or touched your ass at a work event, or took a picture of, you past that, of your passed out half-naked body and sent it to his group chat. This happened to me. Wait, what are you doing? Why Why are you someplace where you're half naked and passed out around people that would do that to you? That, a, again, responsibility, people. Responsibility. American women get to walk through the world every day knowing that the most powerful man in the country is an admitted sexual abuser. Let me tell you, it's a lot. And it makes functioning on a baseline level difficult. You may have noticed that the women in your life have been particularly unhappy over these past two weeks as this news cycle reared its ugly head. We've been showing up late to work, giving you surly looks, loudly complaining about men, etc. Oh, word, I could have been using this this whole time to just be like showing up late to work and being a complete jerk face to all my, everybody I work with, who are all men? Wait, what? Why didn't anybody tell me about this? Not that I want to be a jerk face to anybody, but I mean, if I could use this as an excuse for why I'm late to work is because Brett Kavanaugh, I mean, well, it's better than my normal excuses, I guess. Moving on. (laughs) These are coping mechanisms. And perhaps you, a thoughtful and potentially kind-hearted person, want to know how to better support your non-male friends and colleagues. Potentially kind-hearted person. Mind you, this is written in GQ. <laughs> this is written for men. This is, they're talking to men. Potentially kind-hearted, like, 
all right, maybe you might be a decent person. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. It's like, just say you don't like men. Like, just say, I think men are dicks. I would respect you a hell of a lot more if you did. But moving on. This is a very good instinct. We appreciate it. Here is some advice on how to do that from the women at the publication founded as Gentlemen's Quarterly. Yes, we know what GQ stands for. And as far as appreciating this, well, we will we'll, we'll get into that as to how much I, as a whammon, would appreciate it if anybody did any of this shit that they're about to detail to me. Number one, ask us how we're doing. When you know that somebody is going through a difficult time, it can be a tricky thing to ask them about. You don't want to pry, but you also want to be supportive. Asking basic questions like, how are you doing, will allow your friends to share as much as they feel comfortable. All right. I know I talked about this a bit when I did my episode on consent, but it strikes me as really odd in this whatever wave feminism that we are in right now, that women seem to be so eager to hand over agency of their bodies, as I talked about in the consent, the consent episode. But this is like handing over agency over your feelings. Like, why would it be incumbent upon a man to come ask you if you're okay? If you're not okay, why would you not just say so? Like, why would you need a man to give you that opening to speak? Like, I don't need anybody to check in on me. Like, if I got something to say, I'll fucking tell you. If I don't, then I won't. If I don't want to talk to you about it, I won't talk to you about it. Like, what is what is this? Like, why... And even if, like, I mean, I'm not, like, super close with my coworkers, but we're friendly. And if somebody walked up to me and asked me if I was okay with this whole Brett Kavanaugh thing, I'd be like, why the fuck are you asking me that? Like, what? Um, I don't really talk about this kind of stuff at work very often, so I don't know. That would just be, that would be really just weird. And it's a weird thing to expect a man to do to like a woman, if you're not, if you're not like super close like that, like that's not something that you really just ask somebody that's like an acquaintance or like your work friend or whatever. Like, like, I don't, I don't get that. Why is it incumbent upon a man to come ask you how you're doing? Like, why wouldn't you just say, hey, I want to talk about something. Would you mind listening and hearing me out? Like, again, it's that agency thing that it really, it creeps me out. Like, every time I see it, like, this idea that you have to wait for permission to speak in a way, just, it's weird to me. Anyway, if you get a response like, LMAO, I'm terrible, or I want to launch myself into space after punching Brett Kavanaugh in his ugly mouth, this gives you a green light to ask the next next important question. Ugh, that sounds like a lot. Want to talk about it? And if she does, it's time for you to put on your big boy listening pants. Okay, first of all, can we stop with the big boy, big girl pant thing? That's so fucking, oh my God, just stop it. It's it's so infantilizing. Like, it's your big boy pants? Like, what, fucking pull-ups? Like, what the fuck? And, And just, if you want to genuinely talk to somebody, like, don't belittle them. And also, this whole idea that somehow the men in your life owe you this, this, I guess, I don't know how you would even explain it, but this idea that, like, you get to just go emote all over whatever man you just want to emote all over, which the only man in my life that signed up for that job is my husband. Like, he said the vows, he put the ring on my finger... He bought the ticket. He takes the ride. He's the only one that has to really stand there and take it when I want to emote. And even then, it's not like he has to stand there mute. Obviously, he can talk to me. But this whole idea that, like, you get to just, like, spew your emotions all over whatever dude happens to be handy is really weird and kind of comes close to that emotional labor thing that feminists like to bitch about a lot. Like, Aren't you asking quite a lot of emotional labor from the man involved to just stand there and deal with your emotions? I don't know. Kind of strikes me that way. But 
back to the piece. Point number two, listening is crucial. Listening is step one of allyship. Can we fuck off with the ally thing? Like, I don't need you. I don't, I don't need a man to be my ally. Like, I don't need your help. I can do whatever it is I want to do all by myself. I don't need a man to be some kind of fucking crutch for me to do what I want to do. Like, stop. You don't fucking need dudes. God. Anyway, listening means not interrupting. It means making eye contact, paying attention, nodding your head, and saying things like, that sounds really difficult, or I hear you. If you're worried about your listening skills, this article, hyperlink to another article, is a good place to start. You know what would be a good place to start? If you're looking for somebody to just go talk to who's going to nod and smile politely and say things like, that sounds really difficult, or I hear you. Um, Maybe a therapist would be a good place for you to start. But then again, those are people that expect money for their quote-unquote emotional labor. And I'm assuming that that's not really what you're looking for. So I don't know. If you want to talk to somebody, get a dog, get a therapist. Stop expecting just like random dudes in your life to be your therapist. Point number three, practice introspection. We have all done a handful of shitty things in our lives. That is simply how it works. Okay, no, I, I, I stopped right there. I thought, oh, okay, maybe this is the part where we admit that like women do shitty things too, and maybe, maybe there should be something of some level of forgiveness and give and take here and admitting that, you know, we've all been kind of dicks at some point in our lives and maybe we should have some kind of grace and forgiveness. No, that's not where we're going with this. That's not where we're going. Because we live in a misogynistic society, there is a good chance that you have laughed at a sexist joke or made a woman uncomfortable or crossed a boundary. To that point, if you are a woman, you have probably laughed at a sexist joke against men, and you've probably made a man uncomfortable, and Lord knows you've probably crossed a boundary because apparently it is much, much more socially acceptable for women to do these things to men than it is for men to do them to women. So let's let's not get all up on our high horse here, because like I said, everybody's done some dickish things that we should all probably apologize for. But instead of that, maybe let's just all have the grace to admit that we've all fucked up at some point. This is a time to examine your past actions and thoroughly consider the ways in which you can be a better person. In parentheses, do not make a woman do this for you. If you need help, find a therapist. You first! Anyway, what separates a pretty good but flawed dude from a Kavanaugh is owning up to one's transgressions and examining one's privilege. Oh, so I guess we did... Did the, did the trial happen? Was Kavanaugh found guilty of sexual assault and I missed it? Because I've been following it pretty closely. And I don't remember ever getting to the point where Kavanaugh was found guilty of sexual assault. Maybe I missed it. Or maybe I'm not just an asshole who automatically assigns the worst intentions to a man and just automatically believes anything that anybody says against a man. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. We don't need you to be perfect. We just want you to admit that you're not and try, on your own, to be better. Well, gentlemen, may I suggest something else that would probably make the ladies here like Marion happy? Just go ahead and shave your heads and get naked and go walk through the town square and have some nuns follow behind you just ringing a bell and saying, Shame! Shame. Because that's what this is. Like, what? You're... Oh, my God. So, basically, what you are supposed to do as a man is to sit down and think of all the ways in which you might have fucked up in your life and basically just shame yourself for it and pay penance for it, even though the person 
that you may have wronged is not the person that's in front of you. It's some other random chick who you probably haven't done anything to, but whatever, pay for whatever crimes that you've done and just, you know, just self-flagellate too while you're at it. Just go ahead. Once you get back from your walk around the town square, just go self-flagellate for a little while and then go sit in the corner and think about all the bad shit you've done and just feel bad. Just feel bad because you're bad because you're a man. Okay? Just remember that. You're not perfect. Remember? Okay. Next point. Whatever you do, do not make it about you. I acknowledge that this particular news cycle is distressing for everybody with a conscience. Um, no, you don't seem to think it's very distressing for the men for whom I would imagine that any of you who have a conscience or give a shit about women or about sexual assault, you probably also find this news cycle rather disturbing. But... But one of the most frustrating things a dude can do right now is imply that it's just as hard for him as it is for a woman. Saying things like, yeah, I get it, this is rough, implies that you understand our experience, which, as empathetic as you may be, is patently untrue. Sorry, guys, you cannot show empathy here because you do not have a vagina. And if you do not have a vagina, then... You can't participate in this conversation about how, yeah, this probably is pretty shitty, and yeah, it probably is difficult on you, and yeah, I I feel ya. No. No, you penis havers do not get to have empathy right now, I suppose. So just bear that in mind. Don't don't say, wow, I they, I can see where this is rough for you. Or wow, this is I, I can I I understand where you're coming from. Don't say that because you don't have a vagina. Only the vagina people can say that right now. Acknowledge that you can't relate, but that you want to support us regardless. Well, how exactly is a man supposed to, like, support you and try to be an ally, quote-unquote, I hate that fucking word, without showing empathy like you're trying to connect with someone in a somewhat human way and not in this like weird automatronic just smile and nod politely way like if somebody is telling you that they're they're hurting and they're in pain then that's like if you if you at all care about the person that's going to be your response is to be like yeah i feel you like i i understand why you feel the way you do and To basically just shut that down is like, what, what, what emotional response exactly are you expecting from a man in this situation? I don't, I don't get it. Moving back to the piece. Similarly, being performatively outraged on social media may make you feel good, but it doesn't help us very much. Sending a text, maybe something like, hey, how are you? I know this week is a heavy one gives us the message that you care more about our feelings than your reputation as a good woke dude. (sighs) But y'all, y'all love them good woke dudes that pop off on Twitter. I see it. Y'all think they're, they're just, hmm. Y'all need, well, first of all, y'all need to stop falling for that good woke dude shit because if there's anything that we have learned recently, it's that those dudes are probably the ones that are actually assholes in their private life. But, I mean, I don't, again, I don't get what you're wanting from a man here. Like, if you want him to, like, ask you how you're doing, and that's it. Like, there's no other emotional response that he can give you after that. Like, what? I don't, I don't, I don't understand this. Next point. And do not get defensive. Saying, hey, not all men are bad is a very fast way to piss off a woman who is trying to vent. Remember, she is not talking about you specifically. If your friend says she wants to cut off every dick in a five mile radius, let her. Okay, well, I'm going to assume that if his dick is somewhere in that five mile radius, then you're fucking talking about him. And actually, there is something to the not all men thing, because 
so much of this seems to be trying to paint men as a whole gender, as these just awful, horrible, vile creatures. And I don't think that it's a bad thing for any particular man to point out that, hey, I don't do this stuff. I'm not like some horrible creature. But no, apparently that's not okay. Apparently you have to stand there and feel shame for your whole gender and what some people in your gender have done. Even though I'm sure no woman would take that kind of abuse. Like no woman would sit there and just like take heaps of insults and shame upon her own head because some other woman did some fucked up thing. But apparently that's what you're expected to do. And yeah, so I guess, I don't know. If your friend says she wants to cut off every dick in a five mile radius, I don't know, I guess the supportive thing to do is, I don't know, go fetch her a knife. Or maybe if you want to really be an ally, maybe just go ahead and pull your own dick out. That way she can chop yours off first. Because, you know, five there's a lot of dicks in a five mile radius and that's going to take her a long time. And, you know, maybe, maybe you should be the helpful dude. Maybe you should be a good woke dude and just, you know, help her on her dick chopping rampage. I guess. Actually, don't do that. I'm sure all of you like your dicks exactly where they are and they, and you don't want them chopped off. Next point. Don't tell us it's going to be okay. Telling us it's all going to be fine in the end is just a way of invalidating our experiences and feelings. In the words of Jaya Senexa, so many men try to say sorry and then cheer me up. And no, you don't get to do that. You have to sit with me being furious and sad. Honoring our rage is one of the kindest things you can do. And please, whatever you do, don't act shocked about all this. It's nothing new. Okay. If what you are wanting as a woman is to find some person or persons to sit around and wallow in your furiousness and your sadness, men are not going to be the best group of people to do this around. And let me explain. If a man actually cares about you, if he loves you, if he gives any kind of remote shit about you, he's going to look at this and be like, oh, look, she is sad and angry and depressed. Well, I don't want her to be sad and angry, depressed because I like her. So let me try to fix it. Let me try to cheer her up. Let me try to make her smile again. And it's not because they're uncomfortable with your emotions. It's because that's what men do. They want to fix things. And so they look at you being unhappy as something for them to fix. It's not, they, they're not emotionally equipped to just sit there and like kind of wallow in emotions. Like they want you to be happy. Because they care about you. And so that's where this whole, like, you know, trying to cheer you up thing comes from. Because they they want you to be happy. Like, any man, at least any man worth a shit, doesn't like to see women upset or sad or angry or depressed. Like, you, you want the women in your life to be happy. So you do whatever the thing it is that you think is going to make that happen. And there's just something else here that... I'm probably going to get into when I record my next episode about not women like this, not really understanding how men express emotions. So I'm going to kind of shelve that and delve into that a little later. So let's move on in the piece. Next point, make our lives easier. Whew, in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're going to make it through this. Would I like every man reading this to Venmo me $5? Sure, but what I'd really like is for men to look for small ways to make women's lives easier right now. Offering to help us with tasks, asking if you can take anything off our plates, buying me an ice cordado with oak milk from the good coffee place near the office. I'm just spitballing here. Okay, let's go ahead and back up. So, if you're feeling particularly aggrieved by the patriarchy right now, what you're saying is the solution is to either give you money or to buy you things or to do your job for you, I guess. What the fuck kind of retrograde infantilizing bullshit is that? Like, oh, I'm so 
if every man just Venmo's you five dollars, all of a sudden everything's cool. Or if some dude buys you what? By the way, what what the fuck is an ice cordado? And how the hell do you milk an oat? What the fuck is that? But what I mean, honestly, like this is it. This is less you wanting somebody to actually have your back emotionally, and more like. Hey, let me see what kind of dumbass dude I can con into to just, like, try to pay his way into my good graces again. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, get the fuck out of here with this. Moving on. If you don't have to bend over backwards, doing so may make your friend feel like a tiny baby who needs rescuing. But offering to do small things can have an outsized effect for somebody who is struggling. And remember that the key word is offering here. No, you do want to be infantilized, and you do want to be treated like a tiny baby. Like, I thought that I was beginning to take this Kavanaugh shit a little too, like, personally. But I'm not to the point where I need a man to, like, help me function in my day-to-day life. Like, I don't need anybody to come help me function to make it through this. Like, what the hell is this? This is just, you want... You want to beat a man over the head and you want to kind of put them in a position to kiss your ass over something that they have nothing to do with. Like, unless any of these dudes is Brett Kavanaugh, like, why, why is it incumbent upon them to do any of this shit for you? Like, I thought the whole point of of the whole feminist movement was equality. This isn't equality. This is you wanting to be treated in a very special, very coddled way because this situation that really has fuck all to do with you, to be completely honest, is happening. So now what? You get iced coffees and guys offering to do your work for you and you want to claim that you don't want to be treated like a tiny baby, but clearly you do? Like, get fuck off. All right. Gotta move on. We're almost, we're almost to the end now. Last point. Make a commitment to doing this work forever. Step one of all this is being there for your friends, family members, and co-workers. Step two is finding ways to make the world a better, more equitable place for everyone. Oh, yeah, there's that equality thing I was talking about. Equitable would be to expect you to handle your own shit. Okay? Familiarize yourself with women's issues and perspectives. That means reading books and articles and not relying on your friends to explain everything to you. In parentheses, we're exhausted and probably don't feel like it. Again, lest you think that there was any, any, anything here along the lines of having a discussion with men about anything or actually like saying anything other than just venting your emotions on someone? No, no, it's you, you need to go read a book. It's peak midwit. Read a book is peak midwit. So this is, yeah, go, go figure out how to be a good man, but God forbid you ask any of the women in your life, like, what can I do to be a better man? No, that's forbidden because you know what? They tired of shit and they don't want to actually talk to you. Find organizations like RAIN or Planned Parenthood or a local woman's shelter to donate to or get involved in. Oh. Oh, now we're donating their time? Like, okay, I guess dudes just have shit else to do, but go donate their time or their money to the organizations that you want them to go donate their time and money to. All right, cool. Have conversations with your male friends about all these things and call them out when they are being sexist, racist, transphobic, or homophobic. Boy, make yourself fun at parties. Yeah, police your friends' speech and thoughts. That sounds lovely. Yeah, that's going to get you so many friends, and you're going to be invited over to so many parties and cookouts and bar crawls and basically Anything that involves other dudes who don't want to be told what the fuck they can and cannot say. Believe anyone who shares their story of abuse. Fuck you. No. I've already talked about this. But again, for the sake 
of, in case you haven't heard that rant, nobody, uh, nobody on the basis of their gender, their race, their sexuality, anything deserves to be blanket believed on anything. If you are accusing somebody of something, then you should have proof. You don't just get to say, hey, I accused you of this, and because I am blah, blah, blah identity, you should automatically believe me and automatically believe everything that comes out of my mouth. Fuck off with that. That is so, so infantilizing, and it's just so demeaning to women. Like, somehow you can't bear the burden of proof and that everybody should just believe you because you're a woman. Like, just stop. Just get the fuck out of here with that. Try to move through the world with the awareness of all the ways that is unfair to women. We've been doing it our whole lives. <sighs> I mean, what the fuck? This whole thing is just like, I don't, I don't understand this line of thinking and this line of mentality that somehow you are owed something from a man because you are a woman because some other thing happened to some other woman. Like, what the fuck does this have to do with you? Like, in your dynamic with the men in your lives, like, unless one of these men specifically wronged you in a specific way, why the fuck should they be made to pay for somebody else's crime? Like, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And it's just like, stuff like this is just, oh, I mean, it's, it's not just solely pertaining to our current social situation. I mean, obviously stuff like this would exist no matter what. Just the fact that this is written in response to the Kavanaugh situation and as a way of addressing two men what you should be doing right now to kind of coddle the women in your lives because, oh my God, the thing is happening and the women's need to be to be safely protected and their emotions and their things. And it's like, God damn it, you know, stop. Like, you're not that weak. I'm not that weak. I don't want anybody thinking I'm this weak. No, I can handle my own shit. So can every other woman. And that's why this shit just annoys the hell out of me every time I see it. Stop infantilizing yourself. Stop making yourself a victim of something. Just stop. It's so... Oh my God, it's just such a turn off and it makes it so hard to remotely justify like anything kind of going on in the feminist movement right now. And there are some women out there who are trying to actually advocate for equality and for individual freedom and individual liberty and self-ownership and self-responsibility. And it's just women like this have ruined the feminist label to where women like that, it's like, you almost can't even use it because you get lumped in with these, these idiots. So, I mean, it's just, I, I wanted to talk about this piece. I wanted to go ahead and make this episode. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now because I'm just getting more mad the more I think about it. So, I will be coming in with my normal Thursday episode. This may go up after that, but I wanted to go ahead and get it recorded while I have time. So, like I said, let me go ahead and wrap it up here. If you do like this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. Take care, and until next time.